In encouraging people to pursue their purpose, one big question that I will have to answer over and over again is this. Where is the money in purpose pursuit? Like, if I keep pursuing my purpose, like you're telling us to keep pursuing our purpose, I am gifted in this and I'm gifted in that. Where is the money? I mean, if I'm going out there to look for a job, and if I'm given the job, I know for sure at the end of the money, immediately there is an answer to that question. At the end of the month, there is going to be money. At the end of me, the contract is going to be money. At the end of the project is going to be money. And it's over a season of time, which is promised, which is written down and signed, sealed and delivered. But will you guy with your purpose pursued things, where does the money come from? So today, I'm going to start a new episode, a new series on this podcast. And I want us to discuss a subject that I've titled, The 10 Reasons Why There Is No Profit From Your Purpose Pursuit. You want to stay tuned to this one. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. When I got the opportunity to go to college to study management information systems, I went on the first day accompanied by my father and he was wearing a collar, being a priest and so on, one of the most embarrassing things. And there's another episode I'm going to talk about that later on, much, much later on. But this, we went to him, we went with him together into the school administration's office and so on. And the head of the Department of Management Emotion Systems was there, and everyone else was there and so on. And he asked the most important question a parent normally asks. And very many parents are asking that question. For years on end, for decades on end, for seasons on end, the culture, by the way, is being driven, directed by that question. He asked this question, are there jobs with this cause that he is taking? The mindset and the philosophy behind that thinking is what is in the minds of very many people. We go to school specifically to answer that question. I mean, we might be sounding as if that's not the case, but it is the case. You ask anyone who has just graduated out of school, ask them, so what's next? They will tell you something related to a job. Either I'm looking for a job or I'm in between jobs or whatever it is. They will almost always, a big percentage of people almost always answer you that question. And that's why people are going and taking particular courses because those courses have a promise for jobs as compared to others. And that's why people look down on those guys who are doing other kinds of courses because they quote unquote do not have a promise, a prevalent promise as compared to other mightier causes like engineering and pharmacy and and medicine and and so on and and architecture and accounting and all those things and by the way even as we speak all those major so-called major courses big time courses they have very many guys who have qualified in them and they're still asking the same question are there jobs in this pursuit are there jobs in this course and that's exactly the same question people will be asking me. You are the guy who is fronting us to have purpose, to pursue purpose to the hilt. Is there money 
in that pursuit can i get money out of it can i sustain a livelihood out of it frankly that is a very good question to ask it's a valid question to ask but is it is it the right question to ask at that particular moment is it the most important question to ask with purpose well probably yes probably no because we are living in an empirical world where energy is expended and when you expend energy you have to gather it back in other words you've got to pay your bills you've got to put food on the table you've got to put clothes on your back you've got to pay school fees and you've got to do all this and do all, all these things is got to have an answer of where income is going to come from and the question will still be valid is there a way i can make a livelihood out of papa's pursuit we need to answer that question and frankly i cannot answer that question without reflection i do believe that in the grand scheme of things we were not necessarily created for jobs yes we were created for productivity we were created to work this the design the crux of man's meaning on the face of the earth is work but that does not necessarily mean a job work does not necessarily mean a job and i'm going to go through very many tangents here and there to explain that the world's phenomenon in terms of working and jobs has changed and it keeps changing and it keeps evolving i've been always quoting this and saying that up to maybe 5 years ago maybe 7 years ago big time hitters in employment and in technology guys like google guys like ibm apple guys like microsoft and all those guys big time employers they started sending out messages that it is not necessarily going to be a requirement for someone to have a university degree to be employed with us they are looking for something else and that my friend is drawing closer and closer to purpose in other words the guy who was going to MIT and the guy who did not go to MIT probably have an equal opportunity to be employed at so such big institutions because of something else that they are looking for there are very few guys who are needed in this world that are technical i mean they have high knowledge of technical things the way technical things happen but that's just maybe 20% or maybe less than 20% of the entire human population the rest of us we can still be relevant in other avenues when we remove the philosophy of jobs out of our psyche because it is not just a job that is going to make you an annual living we need to change the way we look at things so the question is is there purpose is there money in purpose pursuit Harvard Business Review they did a very good story a very good report on purpose and one of the things they said is that on its own purpose is nothing more than an aspiration which is true and they say that it has its sidekicks it has measures it has methods that make purpose a tangible and something that can be pursued and they keep the, the managers on the straight and on the narrow see there are hundreds of thousands of gifted people around the earth there are very many even if you look in your vicinity i am guaranteeing you you cannot fail to find some unique ability person some guy with something so unique around him but the question is why is it that those guys do not get employed and why is it that they do not get income a lot see there are those who are in hot pursuit of purpose and yet for some years on end they do not see the profit it is not making sense and that's why some of your folks are telling you get out of the house and go get yourself a real job these things you're doing here and so on they do not pay they don't pay bills So this is the reason why very many people would rather seek for jobs because jobs basically they come with a guarantee I give you a job today you know at the end of the month I'm going to be giving you money so it's easy for me to look for a job than to pursue my purpose because purpose doesn't have a guarantee immediate guarantee that this is going to be the income that's going to come out of it and purpose is more of an aspiration 
than it is for maybe uh, some vocation or a task or a responsibility that you do. It's more of an aspiration, more of a passion. And for a good percentage, people will be steeped into the aspiration and into the passion than into where is the money. And I'm going to talk about that. It's one of the reasons as to why there is no money in your purpose pursuit. So let me not go ahead of myself. A job comes with immediate guarantees of certain amount of cash for a specific amount of period. Seasonally, there is momentum, there is certainty, consistent certainty is there. That, you know, I've signed a three-year contract or I've signed, I've been employed, there's a full-time employment here and I know, come rain, come high water, I'm going to get money at the end of the month. Even if I don't get money, the contract has been signed and the promise is there. That is not the case with purpose pursuit. There is no contract that you've signed with yourself that says there is going to be this coming out of this when you do it. See, there are some obvious benefits that flow out of, out of a job. These things, however, are not so obvious for the entrepreneur. They are not so obvious for the artist. They are not so for ov- obvious for the guy with passion and gifts and talents and that's all they're bringing to the table on the face of the earth and by the way that's the same thing that's supposed to be for all of us at the end of the day we have writers who are broke i write myself maybe on a daily basis on a weekly basis you find me writing at least five articles each of close to 800 plus words i write books on a daily basis i'm writing a book The question is, where is the money right now? You've you've got to pay money, put money, I mean, fuel in your car tank. You've got to put money in your cell phone and you've got to put money. I mean, you've got to live. Basically, you've got to pay bills. We have gifted instrumentalists who are yet to make it in life. My wife was telling me the other day of a guy who was so gifted in music, he got a contract with a big time record label and something went all wrong with it. We have artists who are obscure. As a result, most of these gifted and extraordinary people, people of purpose, they are being disillusioned. They are thinking that, man, what's the point? Honestly, what's the point? I know guys who have startups and they are so passionate about probably teaching kids in a different particular way and there is no money that is coming out of it as yet and it's for years maybe five years seven years down the line the question still is where is the money so the question on the lips of most people who love these guys who are struggling these guys who are purpose people guys who are gifted people guys who are passionate about the things that they're doing that are not in the mainstream job market like you know clacking around or sitting on a bank teller or being a secretary somewhere or writing code for a particular company or whatever it is you know being a salesperson and running around to try to make people to sell products and so on for the guys who are doing something totally different their loved ones are asking man when are you gonna get a real job when are you going to really make money this thing of yours is there money in it you love football where is the money in this football this is africa this is not europe where is the money in that football you are such a good you have such a good voice when you speak where is the money this is africa people don't pay people for speaking and they tell you go and get yourself a real job so the question on their lips of the loved ones is this why is there no profit from your purpose pursuit why is it that you are not pursuing your purpose i mean why is it that you why is it that you are not getting money for the thing that you've been passionate about for these years on end and indeed it is an important question that these incredible people they must take some time to get an answer for it i always say that it is better to pursue purpose i know this for a fact that it is better to pursue purpose and be broke momentarily. And this momentarily, I'm putting it in quotes. Depending on your hunger, depending on your drive, depending on how things are aligned for you, this momentary thing can range between a day, a week, a month, years, or a decade. But it is better to pursue purpose and be broke momentarily 
than to take a diversion that offers a temporary reprieve and get lost in that temporary reprieve. See, personally, I strongly believe that you need to pursue your purpose. Come rain, come shine, sticking on it like a bulldog on a mailman. The same way you're looking for a job every single day is the same way you need to be faithful to the purpose for which you're being called. Faithful to the gifts and the talents that you have. Faithful to your unique abilities that you have. See, the way of profit from passion has not been institutionalized and taught like the way of getting money through a job. As much as we want, you know, to say that, you know, jobs are a sure way of how you can be able to get money. The thing is, the fact is that we have spent money, we've spent resources, task forces, the world over, millennium, millennium development goals, all over the place, the focus has been to equip people so that they can be employable. And then the path of purpose, the path of passion, which is now coming up, if you Google something called the gig economy, it's coming up, has not been necessarily institutionalized and, you know, accredited the way that jobs have been. The way of profit from passion has not been institutionalized as much as it jobs from graduations have been. However, around the earth, there are scores of people who have basically done exactly that. They have found a way where passion leads to profit. They have found a path where passion leads to profit that is not necessarily steeped into the starter school, steeped into the traditional way of doing things, go to school, get a degree, and apply for jobs. They have gone out on something that they were passionate about. They have packaged it well. They have found a niche market around the earth, and they have served. And it, this is just something that tells us that if someone else has done it, there is a possibility that it could be done in another place, in another way. I could say the same for myself. I look at myself around my life and I can tell you this, that I have been able to propagate the idea of my purpose pursuit to the degree that quite a good fraction of income that comes into my life it is steeped strongly into my purpose pursuit than into some kind of contracts and some kind of jobs that I've got. Not to say that the jobs do not have a place. Not to say that the jobs and the contracts don't have a place. They have a, a firm place in, in life. But if you are steeped into them and you are not pursuing what your purpose is supposed to be, you basically might be doing the wrong thing. See, Harvard Business Review say that purpose is an unforgiving taskmaster and you can forget it at your own peril. You see, if it has been done by another human being, chances are that it can be done by someone else. And so, I will say this, that no matter how weird the idea of your purpose is, I can tell you that over and over again until I become blue in the face. No matter how weird it is, to some people around you as long as you have some eyes your eyes focus on it your passion is in it and you cannot let go today i was reading a story about kids who were taught how to play chess and there was a kid who was so passionate about chess that her father found her playing chess in the bathroom at midnight and the father said keep that chess board away move away from it and she said I cannot move away from it. They are the ones who cannot move away from me, these chess pieces. In other words, the passion is so much there. Some casual observers do not see any benefit, any profit. It's weird to them. Let me tell you this, no matter how weird it is, there is a place for that thing on the face of the earth. And however, due to financial pressures and the cultures of the world, very many people are abandoning their purpose to follow something that is more obvious. It can be explained. It fits into the narrative of the status quo. This is how the culture of the day normally operates. And so what do we do? We look for a job. 
and in turn you can end up regretting later on when you dump the weird to pursue the obvious Jim Rohn said this he said that we must suffer for one of two points the pain of discipline in the things that we are doing right now or the pain of regret in the things that we did not do right now and he said that the pain of discipline is in ounces as compared to the pain of regrets which is in thousands of kilograms tons basically so the main pain of discipline in the moment can be overwhelming and maybe not even rewarding there is no reward in doing the podcast no reward in doing the article no reward in doing the speeches and uh, we look around you people are getting jobs and they're actually moving ahead and you're thinking this purpose pursuit thing is not working let me dump it the thing is that there are certain reasons why your purpose pursuit has not yet yielded a profit and the same reasons could be why your pursuit of purpose will still never return a profit for years to come and i want us to start discussing those things in this episode starting with the next episodes turning your purpose into a profit is all about knowledge it is about strategy it is about intention and it is about action and i want to give you some of those things in this episodes until tomorrow when we are going to start delving into the subject matter for now bye bye a special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.